Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I'm Cassie, Marketing Supervisor at GenScript, and I'll be the moderator for the webinar today. A little background about GenScript for those who are new to us. GenScript is the leading life science research and application service and product provider in various fields, from basic life science research to translational biomedical development, industrial synthetic products, and cell therapeutic solutions. The topic for today's webinar is therapeutic recombinant antibody development with next generation proprietary trial expression system. And we have our application scientist, Dr. Tan Hui Fun, to present for today. Dr. Tan is a key person supporting the Genscript Asia Pacific Division recombinant proteins production platform services. She graduated with a PhD in biological sciences from Nanyang Technological University and continued to work as a postdoctoral research fellow for another two years. She has eight years of research experiences in cell and molecular biology. Her previous research mainly focuses on understanding on how a family of proteins, known as kindlings, regulates the stability of mitotic uh, spindles assembly in addition to their primary role as an integrins regulator. By understanding the mechanisms behind its function in cancer, it helps to identify the molecular targets for therapeutic purposes. This webinar will take around 45 minutes and we'll have about 15 minutes for Q&A session later. You can type in your questions in the chat box and we'll answer them after the presentation. If we didn't get to answer your questions during the Q&A session, we'll email the answers back to you after this webinar. A special part for this webinar today, which uh, we will launch for this webinar, you can take part on our poll and our, also our post-webinar survey and stand a chance to win a JavaScript gift pack worth up to $50. So without further ado, we'll let Dr. Tan to start her presentation now. Dr. Tan, over to you. Okay. Thanks, Casey, for the introductions. Hi, good day, everyone. I'm Hui Fun the few application scientists from GeneScript. Thanks for taking time to attend today's webinar, and it is my pleasure to be here to share the therapeutic recombinant antibody development with next generation proprietary troll expression system. In today's webinar, I will first talk about what is recombinant antibody and how does it be generated, and then followed by how to select a suitable host expression system. After that, I will discuss um, why true expression system is still the favorable workhorse for the recombinant antibody productions. Lastly, I will discuss what are the common challenges which scientists and researchers face today and what is the optimal high throughput solution from GeneScript can help you to solve your problems in antibody productions. First, I will give an overview of the recombinant antibody. Antibodies are proteins that belong to a family of proteins called immunoglobulin. Antibodies are produced naturally by lymphocytes, generally in response to the infections by microorganisms such as bacteria or virus. The first research leading to the discovery of antibodies was in 1890 by Edmil and Shiba Shabura, transfer serum from the immunized animal against diphtheria to animals suffering from it, and they established the serum therapy. In year 1900, Paul proposed the site change theory, where he hypothesized that site chain receptors on cells bind to a given pathogens. He was also the first to propose a model for an antibody molecules, in which the antibody was branched and consists of multiple sites for binding to foreign antigens and for the activations of complement pathway. In year 1948, Abstreet demonstrated that plasma B cells are specifically involved in antibody productions. After this, in year 1957, Blank and David has developed the clonal selection theory. This stated that a lymphocyte makes a single specific antibody molecule that is determined before it encounters an antigen. By 1959, Jarrett and Rodney independently published the molecule structures of antibody, for which they were later jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in 1972. In 1973, the first atomic resolution structures of an antibody fragments was published, and this was quickly followed by the invention of monoclonal antibody in 1975 by George and Kaiser called hybridoma technology. This is the start of the modern era of antibody research and discovery. 
In year 1984, Morrison's and Neuberger independently developed the first chimeric antibody. The immunoglobulin genes from a mouse hybridoma cell line was cloned into a vector to, the, to be manipulated. Morrison and the team replaced the mouse FC fragments with a human FC fragments. Neuberger and the team expressed the plasmid in a myeloma cell line, J558L. In 1990, antibody engineering technologies were established. After that, more and more therapeutic antibody has been approved and come out into the market. These are some of the therapeutic antibody examples come out from each year. Hybridoma technology is the primitive's most fundamental and successful methodology in the field of the monoclonal isolations. It relies on the B cells that are mature in the secondary lymphatic organ in response to an antigen. These antibody producing B cells are then harvested from the mouse and fused with the immortal B cell cancer myeloma to produce a hybrid cell line called hybridoma. It is cultured in the HAT media to select the positive cell and then go on with the clonal selections and expansion for the monoclonal antibody. This technology is quite robust and useful in the discovery of thousands of antibodies for different applications. However, ethical, quality, and reproducibility issues are always the main concerns in this technology. To try to overcome this problem, a new generation of antibody has been developed, which is the recombinant antibody. Recombinant antibodies are generated outside the immune system using synthetic gene. DNA sequence of highly specific and versatile antibody was obtained from phage ribosome yeast library and then cloned into the vectors and then introducing into the expression host such as bacterial mammarian cells for the production of functional antibody. Each of these technology platforms has their respective advantages, limitations and applicability, which I will discuss further in the next slide. Recombinant antibody provide many important advantages compared to the traditional antibody. Here, there is a poll question launching in this slide before I start my explanations. The answer for the poll question is True, as recombinant antibody do not require do not require animal immunization in the production process, as recombinant antibody are derived from the DNA. Other than that, recombinant antibody is quicker to produce than traditional antibody. Hybridoma technology require around months, whereas the recombinant antibody technology require weeks. Recombinant antibody have an excellent batch-to-batch -batch reproducibility and lot-to-lot -lot consistency because they are biologically defined and can be exactly replicated. They can be genetically modified to obtain a greater affinity to a specific antigen. For example, they can be optimized by using molecular biology methods such as site error prone PCR or directed mutagenesis to increase their functions. They can be subjected to isotype conversion, which means that a recombinant antibody fragment can be converted into several species, isotype and subtype by changing the constant domain. They also can be conjugated with other molecules such as biotin, enzyme HRP, AP and so on, and the fluorochrome fixie, PE, APC and so on for research purposes and conjugated with toxins and drug for therapeutic use. They can be produced in different forms such as the minimized antibody SCFV, FAB, VHH, and so on, which are not available with the traditional antibody technologies. Recombinant antibody maintain high sensitivity, high specificity, and low immunogenicity. Recombinant antibody can come into different formats, including canonical IgG-like antibody and bispecific antibody. Bispecific antibody is an artificial protein that can simultaneously bind to two different types of antigens or two different epitopes from the same antigens. There are many formats of bispecific antibody, but the two main categories are the IgG light, which have the SC region, and non IgG light, which doesn't contain the SC region. 
Antibody basic structure is a Y-shaped molecule consisting of two heavy and two light chain folded into constant and variable domain. The FAB domain consists of two variable and two constant domain. The variable domain FB contains of three hypervariable loop known as complementarity determining regions CDRS and the framework region. CDRS that allow an antibody to recognize an unlimited number of antigens. The constant regions at the track of the antibody include sites involved in the interaction with other components of the immune system. Antibodies are divided into five major classes, IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD, and IgE, based on their constant region structures and immune function. By specific antibody formats include full antibody size contain the FC regions and antibody fragment size without the FC regions, such as the SCFV, FAB, VHH, and so on, and the complex larger than the antibody formats, including the bivalence and multivalence formats. By specific, by specific antibody with FC region are useful for carrying out FC mediated effectors functions such as antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity and complement dependent cytotoxicity. They have the half life to the normal IgG. For the bispecific antibody without the FC region, which reduce the non specific binding from the FC interactions and rely solely on the antibody binding capacity for carrying out their therapeutic activity. Due to their smaller size, these fragments have a better solid tumor penetration rate, but they are also rapidly clear from the circulation, leading to a shorter in vivo half-life. Till today, there are three bispecific antibody available has been approved by the FDA for therapeutic use. In recent years, bispecific antibody have evolved to be more preference and efficient methods of treatments in several diseases. The global bispecific antibody market is possessed to growth in coming years due to the large number of products approvals and increasing awareness among population regarding the availability of the targeted therapies. Besides the high prevalence of cancers and the unmet needs for targeted therapy are also contribute to the growth of the market. Bispecific antibody are different from the canonical antibodies given the fact that they have two functionality which target multiple disease modifying molecules with one drug. Therapy with a single dual targeting drug rather than combination should also be less complicated for patients. In this figure, bispecific antibody bind to two different types of antigens. One of it um, bind to the tumor antigens and another bind to the CD3 determinant on the surface of the T cell. The cross-linking tumor and the effector cell increase their proximity while simultaneously trigger T cell activations. The result is a targeted and highly effective tumor cell killing. The goal of this effect is to simultaneously target various targets involved in the disease pathway and thereby increase the therapeutic efficacy. From a technological and regulatory perspective, this makes development less complex because manufacturing, preclinical, and clinical testing is reduced to a single bispecific antibody. Next, I would like to talk about how to select a suitable host expression system for recombinant antibody expressions. These are the widely used host expression platform for recombinant proteins in the markets. They are bacterial, yeast, insects, and mammalian system. In, eukary in eukaryotic systems such as yeast, insects, and mammalian, they have the post-translational modification, but not in the prokaryote system, such as the bacteria. Therefore, select an appropriate expression system is a crucial factor to produce correctly folded protein. For antibody manufacturing process development, maintaining desired quality attributes while reducing time to markets, maintaining cost effectiveness, and providing manufacturing flexibility are key issues in today's competitive markets. There are three main expression systems used in the industry, which are the E. coli, insects, and mammalian cell. Before I start the discussion of their characterizations comparison here, there is another poll question launching. Here. 
the answer is true for the poor question the poor questions and e coli does not have poor translational modifications both of the insects and mammalian cells have a post-translational modification, but in insect cell has a simple post-translational modification. Therefore, post-translational modifications are important factor to be considered when choosing an expression system. It affects the protein structures and functions. In terms of the cell growth rate, E. coli growing faster compared to the insects and mammalian cell. Mammalian cell will have be the media to fast depending on what kind of protein you are synthesized. Based on the complexi complexity of the growth media, E. coli is less complex compared to insects and mammalian cells which need to be optimized various conditions. Therefore, in terms of the pricing why, the E. coli will be cheaper compared to the rest. Other than that, expression level of the E. coli is high and mammalian cell will be moderate high and insect will be typically in low amount of expressions. The recombinant proteins were synthesized and secreted to the periplasm of the E. coli. However, insects and mammalian cell are able to secrete to the media, which is easier to harvest the protein and perform the purification step. Talk about the endotoxin level. It is important for therapeutic drug de development. E. coli is the gram-negative cell, therefore endotoxin is always the concern when using this system, but not in insects and mammalian cell. E. coli is suitable to express antigen, intracellular proteins, and two enzymes. Well, insects are suitable to express intracellular and secretory proteins, complicated targeted proteins such as kinases, proteases, trimmer transmembrane proteins. Mammalian cell is typical for secretory proteins and antibody. Our gene script provides a, ser a series of high throughput recombinant protein expression platforms such as bacterial, insects, mammalian, and yeast. We have more than 18 years protein synthesis experience. Our expert scientists and dedicated account managers are invested in helping to maximize the success of our, your research project and will guide you every step of the way. We successfully delivered 30,000 recombinant proteins project and able to have a 98% expression success rate. Besides than that, our another new plant facility in Singapore is ready soon, which will help us to serve you better. Choosing a suitable expression host not only will help you to improve the expression yield, but also will affect the protein functionality. There is a study shown how does different expression systems impact the bispecific antibody nodes into host assembly. In bispecific antibody assembly, half antibody can be expressed in E. coli or Cho host cells, and following cell culture expressions are captured from the harvested cell culture supernatants with similar similar techniques as those used to capture monoclonal antibody. The decision of which host cells to use is driven largely by manufacturing capacity. Production of biopharmaceutical in Cho is well understood, processed with a long history of use in the industrial. Although the number of products quality attributes are affected by the choice of the whole cells, major, major impacts was seen in the bispecific antibody assembly is the effects of the heavy chain CH2 glycosylation. Protein glycosylation is a post-translational modification that is absent in the prokaryote cells such as E. coli, but present in the antibody produced from the Cho cell. Antibody glycosylation is known to promote sc effective function. Glycosylation improves the antibody stability by raising the melting temperature of the CH2 and interestingly also improves the assembly of bispecific antibody only when both half antibodies are glycosylated. Therefore, host expression selection is crucial for bispecific antibody assembly. FDA approved the therapeutic antibodies brinatumonate. It's a bispecific CD19-directed CD3 T-cell engager constructed using bispecific T-cell engager antibody technology. CD19 is expressed nearly ubiquitously in B cell lineage, beside them plasma cell, and therefore this drug is an option for most patients with relapse or refractory B cell acute lymphoplastic leukemia.
Upon binding to both uh, CD19 on B cell and CD3 on T cell, this drug promote the activations and expansions of the CD8 cytotoxicity and CD4 helper T cell resulting in lysis of the malignants and normal B cell. There is a comparison studies of different host expression system on this bispecific antibody. This bispecific antibody was expressed in E. coli and the different Tro cell line. And bispecific antibody produced from the Tro cell have a higher by higher affinity and specificity for both CD3 and CD19 an antigen than the one expressed in the E. coli. Therefore, this also proves that choosing a suitable expression system to express the target protein with all post-translational modification has great importance. Mammalian cells process the conserved secretions and folding machinery. The resulting antibodies are expected to gain the specific post-transcriptional modification that enable the immune activations and target recognition mechanism in mammalian. Now I would like to discuss why CHO expression system is still the favorable workhorse for recombinant antibody production. It has been more than three decades since the first monoclonal antibody, Muronate CD3, was approved by US FDA in year 1986. The increasing importance of the therapeutic antibody is apparent, as therapeutic antibody have become the predominant treatment modality for various diseases over the past years. Due to the recombinant antibody, technological advance have made the discovery and developments of mono corner therapies quicker and more efficient. The global, the global therapeutic monoclonal antibody market is expected to generate revenues of 300 billion by 2025. This year, May, 100 therapeutic antibody has been approved by FDA and majority of them are in the cancer therapy. From year 2014 to 2018, 84% of monoclonal antibodies therapeutics were approved and produced by using CHO cell. Several, several favorable properties have driven CHO cell increased use in bioprocessing, including they are resilient to growth condition, resistant to virus infections, and high protein synthesis capacity. So what is CHO cell? Cho cell is the Chinese hamster ovary cell and they're derived from the epithelial cells of the ovaries of a Chinese hamster. They are widely used for the biological and medical research and commercially used in the productions of recombinant therapeutic proteins. There is a significant amount of work has been done to ge genetically engineer productions of whole cell to improve or modify the product's quality or improve the whole cell robustness. The first Cho cell line was established in 1956. It divides and do not inhibit the limitations on doubling time observed in the primary cell. After that, in year 1968, Cho, Cho Ori was cloned to Cho K1. This cell line is missing a chromosome which carries a gene necessary for glycine biosynthesis, paving the way for selection methods. In 1971, CHO-S was generated and it, it adapted for the growth in suspension liquid culture. This cell line is ideal for scale up and growth in the large scale bioreactor. In 1980, CHO-DXB11 is CHO cell lacking a DHFR activity in one locus and missend mutation in the other. DHFR deficient strains cannot grow unless transfected with a functional copies of DHFR or in the media sup supplemented with the thymidine. Thus, transfecting the XB11 cell with a functional DHFR gene attached to, the, to a gene of interest enable the selections of cells only carrying their gene of interest by growing them in the thymidine-free media. In 1981, CHO-GS is using selections of recombinant cell line using stepwise increasing in the MTX, which is the antagonist of the DHFR concentration in the culture media, result in the amplified copies of the transfected DHFR gene together with the gene of interest. Such induced gene amplification using in usually increase the productions of the gene of interest. 
In year 1983, Cho DG44 was generated, which is containing full deletion of two DHFR loci. Cho DG44 eliminate the problems of the Cho DXB11, which could spontaneously revert back to the functional DHFR enzyme. This new Cho cell line make selection for the gene of interest always possible. Due to this, Cho DG44 are amongst the most widely used Cho cell for the industrial protein productions. In year 1986, human tissue plasminogen activators market as Activas is approved by FDA become the first therapeutic protein from recombinant mammalian cell to obtain the market approval. In year 1989, CHO-K1-SV was developed and it is a suspension protein-free adapted CHO-K1 derived from utilizing the glutamine synthetase gene expression system. CHO-K1-SV expressed the glutamine synthetase enzyme endogenously. Therefore, positive transfectins were obtained under the dual selections of methionine sulfosimate and glutamine-free media. Until today, more than 100 new recombinant protein therapeutics has been approved by UFS, US FDA or EMA, which is with the increased interest in virus diagnostic and treatments, CHO cells are again demonstrating their versatility. Why CHO cell is predominant in the mammalian expression system? Before we start the discussion on comparison between HEC293 uh, and CHO, there is another poll question available here. The answer for the poll question is CHO cell. CHO cell, HEC293 HEC is derived from the human cell line, therefore it is more accessible to human virus compared to the CHO cell from the hamster. In terms of the biosafety, it is also very crucial in the pharmaceutical drug development. Compared to transfection efficacy between them, HEC293 is easy to be transfected, but sometimes CHO is not. Other than that, CHO cell has a faster growth rate compared to HEC293, and therefore CHO cell has a higher yield productivity which compared to the HEC293 cell. CHO cell can be able to grow in the serum-free condition, but not in the HEC293 cells. As we mentioned earlier, post-translational modification is important in protein folding and structure, which will impact the protein functions afterwards. Since HEC293 is derived from the human cell, therefore it can fully replicate human-like post-translational modification. But CHO cell can adhere many of the post-translational modification, but sometimes might have a slightly difference. Due to a large degree of familiarity, CHO cell has been the predominant choice for the productions of many recombinant proteins. This choice is augmented by several glycoengineering strategies to humanize the CHO cell. After the host has been decided, we have to think whether we need a transient or stable transfection depending on the time frame and ultimate goals of the experiment we wish to conduct. Both these transfection methods involve getting the foreign gene into the cells, and in transiently transfected cells, the foreign DNA does not integrate into the host genome and it does not replicate and it eventually lost through cell cycle over several days. Transient transfections is good if you need it fast, typically five to seven days from the point of DNA transfections. Stable transfection also begin transiently, but through a process of carefully selections and amplifications, stable clones are generated. In stably transfected cells, the foreign gene become part of the host genome and is therefore replicated. Descendants of these transfected cells also express the foreign gene, resulting in a stably transfected cell line. Because the stable transfections of uh, of the cell is longer and more arduous process. Therefore, the duration is longer, which is more than three months. During the initial short-term selection process, when research quantity of re recombinant antibodies are needed, rapid methods of recombinant antibody production are required 
but it might have a slightly various in term of in terms of the batch to batch productions. For long term study and productions of therapeutic antibodies, stable genes expression is the preferred option as it allows for greater process consistency and control of the final product's quality. Lastly, I would like to discuss what are the common challenges scientists and researchers facing in antibody productions. So what are the common challenges scientists and researchers facing in the antibody productions nowadays? For example, how could I get a better quality antibody products? I have a budget issues and why the yield of my antibody is always so low. I don't have a enough capacity to synthesize so much of targets and my project or thesis deadline is coming. I don't have sufficient time to finish the productions. Don't worry, the optimal solution for all these challenge can be solved by our new next generation chore expression system. This system is suitable for all types of proteins, antibody species and isotype fragments. Our production team is able to produce 10,000 targets per month. This system is able to scale up and finish by troll, which will save time to optimize the condition if you want to move on for the large scale productions. It can produce high yield and high purity of your antibody from milligram to kilogram. It has a faster turnaround time, which, which just need as short as two weeks, including gene synthesis for typical antibody. It is more cost effective, which enables small scale to kilogram level protein productions based on the same expression system for the, for the best consistency and minimal surprise during the downstream steps. We have a full range of QC and characterization tests available to further identify the quality of your products. It also has a zero error rate. You can check out more in our GeneScript web page under new troll mammalian um, recombinant protein and antibody expression services. If you have any queries, please feel free to contact us directly. There is another poll question available in this slide. The answer is correct. Our next generation proprietary troll expression system is suitable for all types of proteins, antibodies, species, and isotype and fragments. Our genes will provide one-stop solution for recombinant proteins productions. What customers need to do is just provide us the sequence of the proteins and our production team will evaluate and perform a codon optimization to improve the gene expressions. After the gene synthesis and construct generations, expression construct will be transfected to the expression host and scale out to corresponding volume and proceed with the protein purifications and analysis. And then the final product will be sent to you in a very short turnaround time. Here, I would like to show you some of the case study which have been done in our new next generation Cho expression platform to produce the recombinant antibodies. These are the SDS page result with the antibody sample of rabbit IgG, human IgG1, and human IgG4 run in the reducing and non-reducing condition. We are able to produce a purity of 99% or more in this recombinant IgG. Here is another example of the bispecific antibody using nodes into holes and cross mat technique, which expressed in our new next generation CHO expression platform. This is the SDS page result run in the reducing and non-reducing condition. We are also able to produce more than 99% purity in this bispecific antibody productions. Customers just need to provide us the antibody design sequence and the ratio of the plasmid for the bispecific antibody then we can help you to start from the gene synthesis to the antibody productions. In our next generation troll expression 
platform not only can produce the proteins canonical IgG or bispecific antibody containing the FC region, we also can express the express and produce antibody fragment, for example, SCFV and the VHH. The products of these antibody fragments were run in the SDH page with reducing and non-reducing condition. The SCFV is tagged with his tag and then the purity is 99% after one step his trap purification. The VHH is tagged with FC tag and we are able to produce it in the, the purity more than 99% after protein A purification. That's all for my today presentation. If you have any query, please feel free to contact me through this email address and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Tan, for the wonderful presentation. So for all the attendees, uh, if you have any questions, please drop your questions on the question box and we will answer them in this session right now. So Dr. Tan, we have quite a number of questions submitted by the attendees. So let's go through it one by one. The first question, what do you think, what are the new trends and focus area in industrial trial cell line development? Okay, thanks for the question. Um, I think that the final goal for the industrial trial cell line developments will be the stability of the high products use, stability of the products quality, process reproducibility, reduced timeline and the lower cost. Currently, many companies tend to use the same whole cell line for productions and for initial clinical trial as they have realized that this strategy actually simplify the cycle of the cell line development and optimize the way to the clinic. Besides, it reduces the risk of product comparability issue and help manufacturers meet the product quality requirement and consistent expectation. This actually changing property have contributed to a new direction in innovations regarding the CHO expression platform. The focus of the industrial CHO cell line development has shifted toward the issue of whole cell line stability for ensure stable long-term productions. The use of the targeted integrated techniques for expression optimization, especially for complex engineer recombinant therapeutics and the development of selections and screening system for fast and more effective clone selection. There is a paper actually published in 2016. They found that the majority of the stable high product producing clones were marked by the loss of the telomeric regions of the chromosome 8 which exhibit the high volumeric uh, productions and gen generate, generate more stable producer clones. Therefore, our gene suite actually have listened to our customer feedback and needs, and we actually invented this new proprietary chore expression platform, which will help scientists or researchers to solve their recombinant protein expression and production quality issue. We will start from the chore and finish by the chore and reduce the unwanted surprise and inconsistency along the way. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Tan. The next question, what are the key features of this new generation chore system in Genscript? Mm, okay, thanks for the question. In this new chore platform, our expert scientists actually have developed the proprietary vectors and chore cell to be able to produce all types of proteins, antibody and antibody fragments in very short term around time. High yield, which are short, short term around time and high yield, high purity and low antitoxin level. Our production team evaluate the customer provided protein sequence and per perform the codon optimization to improve the gene uh, expression and increase the production yield. This is a high throughput system and it is able to scale out and finish by chore cell, which will save time to optimize the condition again if you want to move on for the large scale productions. And this will also maintain the consistency. This is also a very useful system for syn synthesize many targets in a short period of time and help researchers or scientists to shorten the waiting for product synthesis. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Tan. The next question, E. coli is one of the most widely used hosts for single-chain variable fragment expression. From the case study that you show in Blinatumonet, this bispecific antibody expressed in E. coli has a lower binding specificity and affinity to corresponding antigens. 
what do you think it might be the reason to cause this and what are your opinions in improving functionality of this bi bispecific antibody in this E. coli system? Okay, um, well, this binotumonate consists of two single chain variable fragments linked with a single peptide change. Of course, undeniable, CHO cells are still the prefer uh, preference and predominant host for this bispecific antibody to express due to their advanced protein folding pathway and the post translational modifications. Even though SCFB molecules are much easier to produce in E. coli, however, insufficient protein solubility, which will actually result in the misfolding and the inclusion body, which will actually affect the functional functionality of the products. So the inefficacy in producing soluble SCFB is known to be caused by the lack of ch uh, chaplain and post-translational machinery and the reducing environment of E. coli cytoplasm, which actually prevent the di disulfide bonds to be formed. Formations of the intra-domain disulfide bond in the SCFB molecule. And therefore, subsequent protein refolding and recovering step can be integrated into the process, including those solubilization treatments like urea and guanidine hydrocholine. And then other than that, genetically attaching the secretory signal sequence to the end terminal of the SCFB, which actually will improve the solubility of this bispecific antibody by um, by secreting them into the bacterial periplasm that has the oxidase oxidizing environment. So uh, beside than that, the expression of the solubility enhancing tech such as the MBP, they actually can promote the fac facilitate the correct protein folding. This tech can be removed afterward to allow normal antibody usage. Yeah, I think that's all from, from what I think. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Tan. The next question, what are the factors to consider when we are selecting an expression host system? Mm, okay, uh, it actually highly dependent on the product mass, purity, or the solubility of the recombinant proteins, and the numbers of the disulfide bonds, and types of the post-translational modification, the destination of the expression protein, and the cause or simplicity of the recombinant protein pro production system, and the duration of the productions as well. Thanks, yeah, Dr. Tan. Yes, All right, the next question. Does antiglycosylation make the antibody immunogen for human, even if it is human antibody produced in CHO cells? Okay, uh, regarding to this question, because we have the, we have some, um, based on those kind of study on omic technologies, they actually discover a lot of like metabolomics or glyco like those kind of proteomics showing that there, there are some glycosylation we can uh, doing doing mutation or like CRISPR or uh, to enhance the glyco engineering to help the CHO cell doesn't express those kind of like glycosylation affect the human uh, immunogen. Okay, thanks Dr. Tan. The next question, what kind of immune tests can be done for the validation of CHO produced antibodies, whether it is compatible with human body? You mean what kind of like CHO system? Uh, uh, what kind of tests uh, can be done to validate whether the CHO produced antibody, whether it is compatible with human body? Um, based on actually, it can be like checking based on the structure of the protein before it launch out to like human. Based on the structure, actually, you can see that whether it is similar to what it's supposed to be before before you, you go to the human. Otherwise, you will create a lot of immunogenicity as well. Okay, thanks, Dr. Tan. The next question, uh, monoclonal antibody fragmentation is a current challenge in the field. So how does genscript control expression system mitigate the cleavage issue associated with the protein? Cleavage issue in the proteins, you mean? 
Okay, so we have to, in our media, actually we have like our proprietary vector and the cell line and we also optimize some of the condition to grow them. So it will actually reduce the condition, reduce the cleavage issue problem which occurs significantly in those kind of monoclonal antibody productions nowadays. So our expert scientists have many years of experience to help you to solve all these problems as well. Okay, thanks Dr. Tan. The next question, for bispecific antibodies, can one of the part be done in E. coli and the other part done in CHO? Mm, uh, you mean like uh, you do it separately? Uh, I think not really good because E. coli itself doesn't have the post-translational modification, which actually, if you don't have a glycosylation in E. coli fermented one part, the half antibody, another, another part which is produced by the Cho cell, which have the glycosylated one, but it won't be easily assembly because they don't have a similar glycosylation, we help them to um, assembly together. Okay, thanks Dr. Tan. The next question, in terms of stable cell line transfection, how much is the productivity from Cho cells? How much is the productivity from the Cho cell? Um, this question I would like to get back to you after this webinar because for our system in this new Cho system is the transient one. Our partner, our partner which is ProBio, from GeneScript, actually they are doing this um, stable production and then I will get back to you after I consult the, the scientists over there. Okay, sure. We can write back to this customer again. Yes. So uh, let's move on to the next question. So uh, referring to recombinant DNA technology, antibodies can be produced as other species as human, rabbit instead of mouse. Mm. Where's the following mm. question? I think that's mm. all for the. I think it's oh, more yeah. of a statement more than a question from the customer. Oh uh, yes, it can be produced uh, in different species. Okay, um, yeah. maybe we go on to the next question. Uh, can mm. you license the GenScript Tro cell line for clinical production? Uh, this one because. I think this information is in the discovery phase, so will not be included in the clinical trial application, so clients don't need to worry about the cell line or the vector. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Tan. The mm. next question, to check expression, how much pilot skill culture do you set up? Is there a uh, standard package until the expression evaluation? Yes, we have a one liter for the large skill, which is the CHO HP before we go on for the large scale, um, more skill. So we will try out one liter first, which means that um, when we will tell you what is the result after we produce in the one liter and then we will communicate with the customer. And then by then, we after that, if customer is happy with that, then we will move on to the uh, higher volume. Okay, thanks Dr. Tan. The next question, uh, there's two questions tied in this, so just please bear with me. Yeah? So mm -hmm. uh, the first one is, do we provide the antigen information and GenScript takes it to the development of Cho clone expressing the antibody? Uh, yes, you guys need to provide us the sequence and then we have to mm -hmm. produce it um, based on your sequence and then we help you to synthesize the whole thing. Okay, thanks. The continuation of this uh, question, do you provide purified antibodies or Cho clone expressing the efficient antibody? We produce the purified antibody, which is the the one the afterwards. You means like the Cho Cho expressing? We produce the the antibody itself. Okay, and thanks a lot. So uh, the next question, uh, does GenScript provide cell line development service? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, one la last question just came in. Can GenScript mm -hmm. construct the desired antibody between my specific SCFV and FC? Design? No, uh, we will only accept the, we will only accept the sequence from the customer 
and then we will synthesize based on that. We won't help you to design how to like bind them together. But we based on like by specific antibody, we have the we have we have the common um for common format for by specific antibody we could provide, which is like the not into holes cross mat, IgG SCFB SCFB uh, with the FFB IgG. For others, format designed by customer, we could also help to check the design and do the expression and purification, but we have to check with the um, production team as well. Okay, thanks, Dr. Tan. Um, yeah. this, this question is actually a continuation from the previous question asked by the same uh, attendee. So mm -hmm. uh, he's asking whether he is actually getting the actual chokon expressing of their antibody of interest. Is that right? Chokon antibody. Yes, yes, which means that you provide the sequence of your antibody, then actually we clone this uh, sequence into the vector and then we transfect this vector into the Cho cell and then the Cho cell will produce the antibody. And yeah, then it will be purified. The antibody will be purified after based on the cells, uh, harvest the cell. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Tan. I hope we Thank answered you. the question. Yeah. The next question, how GenScript Cho expression system is different from XP Cho from Thermo Fisher in terms of the amount of production? XP Cho, you mean compared to the Thermo, uh, the amount of production, yeah, because in this in this platform, actually, we seg we separated into three categories in terms of the targeted amount for the small vo volume, which is the Cho HT. Uh, it will be. Uh, I can show you the slide. Hold on. Okay. Can you guys see my slide? Yes, we can see your slide. Okay, based on what we have for this new chore system, we are we have separated based on three categories based on the targets. For this chore HT, which is a high throughput, which is from 0 0.1 to 5 milligram, and the average yield for this antibody synthesis is 300 milligram per liter. For the chore express, which is less than 500 milligram, we can synthesize in this platform, which is more than the 5 milligram one. So the average yield of this chore express is 400 milligram per liter. There is another one which is the large scale, which is more than three, more, more than 500 milligram, and the average yield for this antibody is 1.5 gram per liter. This is, uh, yeah. Only for this, uh, just now there is one attendee mentioned that do we have the pilot evaluation? Is only applicable for this high tru, uh, high amount, which is the large scale, which is the Cho HP system. Okay, thanks a lot, Dr. Tan. The next question, uh, once the cell, if the cell line development is completed, is it possible mm. to license the cell line for clinical production or this platform is only for R&D usage? Um, this is, I'm not too sure about this question, but we will get back to you after this webinar because I need to check back with our production team as well, this one. Okay, can we can write back to this customer again after this yeah. webinar. Okay. Okay. So I think we covered all the questions asked by the attendees. So if there's no other questions, uh, we will just uh, close off this webinar. If let's say any of you have any other questions, please write in to us and we will answer them via email again. So thank you everyone for joining us and I hope you have, I hope you enjoy the presentation and, uh, and you find this presentation beneficial for you. And of course, thank you, Dr. Tan, again for this great presentation. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone, and goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.